Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with James Montgomery, board chair of Westmark School and chief executive officer of Montgomery & Co. With a wide range of investment and business interests, Jamie has also dedicated substantial time to leading a step change at Westmark. He has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us, and I'd like to thank you, Jamie, for joining us today. My pleasure, Mark. You have been the board chair at Westmark for quite some time, and through that time, you've led the school with, of course, other, other parents, other board members, with the staff, through a pretty astounding transition. Why don't we set the stage uh, of Westmark as you first encountered it? Well, Westmark was a, a very good school that was just transitioning out of a partnership with LA Unified. My daughter came here in fourth grade. She's a senior now, so this is our ninth year here. The first couple of years, we were we watched as we had other children in other more mainstream CIS and other leading independent schools, and we wanted to provide her ultimately with the same opportunities they had, and that formed our vision for what Westmark should be. And when Westmark was had this association with LA Unified School District, it was um, operating in a in a different um, yeah, well, capacity. Yeah, it when a school uh, is in partnership with the public. Um, um, school district, usually there's strings attached. In this case, the uh, school would receive funding, which would fund about 80% of the cost of a student, but we had probably 120% of the regulations. There were also uh, some issues that, um, that I re uh, recall hearing about, um, about how the, the pedagogical approach could be shaped. Yes. In that um, you were required to take a, a uh, perhaps a more broad approach that, in essence, was not allowing you to go deep yeah. uh, in areas that, that students, uh, uh, that would benefit students. Yeah, I think in most public schools, uh, they have a one size fit all, and uh, which is counter to the concept here that each kid is unique and, and different, has their own learning style. So what we hope to do at Westmark, aspire to do, was create differentiated learning based on the strengths of the, and potential of the individual student. So over uh, over the next several years, you disconnected from LAUSD. Now. Yeah, the the uh, previous board pulled the plug on uh, LAUSD. Uh, there was about sixty five paying students over the last. This is my sixth year as board chair. There had been a different board chair for every year for the prior ten years. There had been about five changes in the head of school, and we just thought it would be important to have some continuity of leadership. Uh, this is my sixth year as board chair, and Mir Meredith is his fifth year as uh, head of school. And, and one of the first things you did was to actually recruit him. Where did you find him? We found him uh, up in Vancouver, Canada. He was uh, working um, for a, one of the largest prep schools in all of Canada, a K through 12 school. And our vision for Westmark was one of having uh, state-of-the-art curriculum, music, art, and drama, community service, and uh, great athletic and, and uh, PE. And uh, we found a school that had that uh, and had a... Uh, a very good uh, school within a school for kids with learning differences, and he had he had a unique vision and, and set of experiences, and we're delighted to bring him down to uh, 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 Los Angeles. He left one of the large left the largest prep school in Canada to come down to a small school in Los Angeles. It was a great leap of faith. He led a rather comfortable um, professional existence. Oh, he, he did. He he uh, he, and I think uh, heads of school like Muir, good ones like Muir, uh, they they like a challenge, and this was certainly a uh, a challenge. I think. Important thing is we have a strong partnership. I respect him immensely, and um, you know he runs the school day to day, and I do what I can as board chair to help him out. I think the difference in Canada is the boards are um, are elected by the community, uh, and down here we have a little more leadership by trustees. So we understand the difference between governance and leadership and and management, and we're very much in the governance and leadership model down here. And let Muir run the school day to day. And so what constitutes governance at Westmark as opposed to uh, leadership of, of, of the school? Yeah, well, Muir runs the school day to day and, and uh, we'll talk several times a week when he has a big issue, he wants a sounding board, but you know, he makes all the decisions regarding hiring and firing. And, and uh, you know, our, our, our role as a board, and not just myself, but as a board, Muir reports to the board. So you hire and fire Muir, but that's it. We uh, set the mission of the school right. and support the mission of the school. And we provide the resources for the school to be successful in fulfilling its mission. And then we evaluate the head and fire, hire and fire the head. There's other things we do within that con construct, but it's a pretty narrow construct. And I think if you can respect the governance model, you can have a very effective partnership between a board and a head. And we're very active out here, but we know, within that construct. We have a, a revised mission as of a year ago that really focuses on um, 
college prep and preparing our kids for college and placing. And we have tremendous results this year. We're very proud of the work that our team has done here in, uh, in, in the upper school and uh, in both preparing and placing, uh, particularly starting this year with the outstanding results that we're getting. And you have a very well-rounded board with, with people of a lot of different competencies. So when the school um, requires some support, for example, in branding or in uh, mission development or in um, the, the development of strategies yeah. uh, to approach uh, colleges and universities, uh, the board members are, are kind of on call. This is a very mission-driven school. We have some very engaged parents. About 30% of our children here are adopted. So we have a number of same-sex couples, and we have a very diverse board reflecting that fact. We have, uh, the board was not diverse beforehand from a minority point of view, and we really focus on underrepresented minorities and push on diversity and inclusiveness on campus. Uh, we have outside educators. We have two outstanding outside educators on the board. We have people with the competency in uh, finance and construction and fundraising and strategy and marketing and, and it's, it's been a very effective board. We, we jointly with the head, we have four or five objectives a year and we really focus on those four or five. Sometimes people try and bite off more than they can and we've made tremendous progress by prioritizing that list and just getting it done every year. So I'm very proud of the board. But again, my first step here was replacing pretty much the entire board and then building a board. And then with that board, we're able to attract a high quality head. And with that high quality head, then we could attract the team to support him. And with that team, we could mold the school back into that original vision that we had for the school. But while the board um, was, was, um, works very well together and many of the board members were recruited by you, um, this is a board of people who are uh, strong-willed. Oh, geez. <laughs> strong-willed. Oh, they're very independent, yeah. Not shy. Not shy. Um, um, quite opinionated. Yeah. Very passionate yeah. about, about the school oh, and I, about I, the children. Uh, yeah, no, this is a, it's a high performance. We have uh, half dozen CEOs of major private public companies, both men and women, and uh, as well as the group that we described. And, and I've seen uh, some of the, uh, the, the discussions where oh, people yeah. are really not reluctant to mix it up. No, they're good. I mean, it's good. And we also have people in the finance world who come out of Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and J.P. Morgan who understand finance. We have the former head of construction at Hilton Hotels who built 500 hotels a year. We do one building a year here, and he does that in his sleep, and I don't have to go to any building <laughs> meetings. And we have people outstanding at fundraising, and you know, I think my whole thing is, is, is trusting each other, and we trust each other. We, we're different, we're diverse, we're, and it's a great board, and you know, I, have, I have the highest esteem for them. And my observation is that when you, when you um, reach a, a point where there is um, a lot of disagreement, yeah. you tend to move on the areas where you have more agreement yes. and defer yeah. for further analysis those where there's a lot of controversy and a lot of disagreement. Yeah, you know, that's a very good point. My first meeting here, um, I tried to find something we could all agree on. So we um, agreed on cash management. <laughs> and, and I wanted to set a principle that we could agree on something and move forward. Because when I became board chair, I, I had appointed a very good treasurer and I asked him where the cash was. He says, well, one of the parents is managing a fund. It's a shorting the high yield index. Now, it was a very good investment, but it was completely inappropriate for our school. And uh, so I said, well, let's put in place some cash management. That was plain vanilla. So I, I got us, from the first meeting, I thought, let's find some stuff we can agree on and build a process of consensus, and, and then we'll tackle. We tackled the issue of financial aid very quickly, which was good, because we there was no financial aid program here before. Mm -hmm. And that was important to me and, and, and uh, to other members of the board. And we not only put in place a program, but we funded it too. And then um, now probably 30% of the school is on financial aid after four years. So, so we really, you know, we moved on some issues that we're very proud of. And uh, we moved quickly. Some of these issues can really hold up schools. I mean, we, some schools spend a year or two studying their bylaws. We got that done in three months, you know. It's like we have more important things to be doing. We built a building a year here. We completely transform it. We. Uh, or one time I came into a board meeting and I was thinking a lot about iPads. And I said, Mir, can we spend a few minutes before the board meeting? And I'm thinking two years ago that iPads are going to be the way to go. And what did he think? He said he reached the same conclusion independently. I said, well, let's just do it. I'll, we'll have an auction coming up in two weeks and I'll raise the money for, you know, how many iPads you need. He said, 225. So I'll take care of that. And sure enough, at the auction, we got 225 iPads. Everybody was stunned, but I knew I could do it. And I knew he'd implement it properly, and that's the partnership. You know, we agree on a strategy. I got out and give him the resources to do it, and he implements it. It's a beautiful strategy. I don't walk all over him. He's perfectly fine at running the school, and I'm out there 
provide him the resources that he needs. And the thing I'm probably most proud of, though, is um, my first meeting with the faculty. I, I, I said to him, you know, I, every year we meet with them in, in September. We have a back to school session, and I we speak about the plans for the year. We're very transparent with them. There's no secret agenda or anything. We have like three or four <laughs> things we're trying to do. We're not that sophisticated. And and my first meeting with them, I told them, you're all underpaid. And we benchmark you against the 20 leading independent schools here. And over the next five years, we're going to raise your salaries up to the median of those 20 schools. And that has meant between 30 and 45% salary increases for the teachers and in a time when salaries have been pretty flat in education. Right. And we just addressed the issue right up front and dealt with it over time. It took us five years to walk the salaries up to that level and that was the right thing to do. We we're very transparent about it and we're, uh, you know, that's how we deal with it. There's three or four issues we can do a year and we just get them done. And so and the elements here are uh, understanding that you can only do about three or four a year, Yeah. identifying the problem, Yeah. Doing the analysis, not overthinking, yeah. uh, basically spending a, a little bit of time to get most of what you need, most of the intelligence yeah. that you need, setting expectations, and then doing it. It's not a situation where you can communicate to the staff, we're going to fix an issue that we have identified overnight, because you couldn't. Right. You basically engage the staff and you ask them for their patience. Yeah. But you also say, we recognize that we have a problem we want to work with you on solving. It's going to take us about four or five years. I have a gentleman I know who became the uh, finance minister of Chile. And the economy was in a bit of a mess. And he asked the president for one thing, was to go on national television each week for four weeks and explain the depth and breadth of the problem and how he's going to solve it. And after four weeks of this, he had a consensus on how to deal with it. So when I became board chair, the first four weeks, we communicated every week with the entire community about what our issues were and how we're going to deal with it. Then we dealt with it, and it worked out very well. Look, some schools don't like change. It's unstable. But for the most part, you know, we try to always put the institution first and what's the mission of the school. And, and if we ever have an issue, we push the pause button, as you say, and we're very much guided by the mission. If you always think about what's the mission of the school, that can help you make the right decision. Is part of your job as a board chair to listen very intently to feedback from the parents, from the, from the teachers, from administrators, and from the students to identify problems? And then, once those are identified and there's a consensus formed, is the next part of, of your role to actually be the remover of obstacles? Our job is to look at the mission and make sure that we're being consistent with the mission and, 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 you know, and fund those things. And, you know, and, and support support the faculty and staff and compliment them and it's tough it's tough teaching it's you know it's a lonely endeavor and this whole idea of the of the uh, you know independent hero teacher is misconceived it's a team sport and they, they need our support the board too in terms of compensation and resources and technology and classrooms and athletic facilities and that's what we've given them have you had um, major disagreements with Muir who, who, uh, and, and, and with other board members where you've had to, you had a, you had a thought, you were, you were thinking in a particular direction, but you had to actually give way because you found um, and, and it became clear that the direction that you were thinking of was not really the direction. All, that, all the time. All the time. <laughs> well, I mean, sure. I mean, we're, you know, look, and we think out loud a lot. We kick around ideas and... and um, you know, for and, and we haven't been afraid to try things here. I think the biggest challenge is typically between a board, and not just me, but a board and the head of school is over the pace of change. Typically, we agree on what has to be done. And for us, it was very important to have a strategic plan where we could all work together, the faculty, the parents, administrators, and board together on a five-year plan. We waited a year after Muir had been hired to launch that process. And that was a very good process. We came together. Now, I probably could have sat down with three or four trustees and written a plan two years earlier, but that wasn't the point. The point was to get consensus around a plan. And it was a, it was a good plan. And uh, Tess Ayers led that effort for it and did a terrific job. Then this year, we're doing the WASC CIS right. accreditation. And that's a self-study. And when I talked to the faculty to start the year. I said, you know, this is your opportunity to do a self-study, be self-critical. You don't want me coming in here criticizing 
you know, a certain curriculum. What, what, what do I know, right? I mean, but this is your chance to work with experts and work with each other to identify areas for improvement and come to us. And if you need the resources and support, we'll give it to you. And some of these export, uh, experts uh, either serve on the board or serve in an advisory capacity. Yeah, we have a terrific advisory board. I, I remember um, uh, a very prominent individual said that Sally Shaywitz is the world's foremost expert on dyslexia, and she's at Yale. So I flew back to Yale, met with Sally, and I was able to convince her to... Uh, her husband has served on our advisory board, and Sally uh, chairs the advisory board. And we have experts for that we work with from USC and um, MIT, Harvard, and uh, locally here with Cal State Northridge. And they're tremendous resources, not just for the board, but more importantly for the administrative team and the faculty. And they've really helped us uh, up, up our game. So we, uh, you know, and I got to tell you, we have a couple of administrators from other schools on our board, and uh, the best thing I can do is ask them for advice on what to do. You know, I, I don't get too far out of my skis. I've got two wonderful trustees there, and I look at them, and every board meeting I say to them, w what would you do? And they usually have very sound wisdom. So we have a lot of wisdom around the room. My job more and more is to facilitate. And the accreditation uh, process is also uh, pretty interesting because it was not always true that uh, Westmark could have actually even received accreditation. Absolutely. One of my first jobs was... Uh, task uh, was to uh, take the head of CIS out for lunch and uh, discuss the uh, criteria for joining CIS. There were no schools that were, uh, quote, special ed schools right. uh, in, in CIS. And they managed to change the bylaws uh, to allow us to, uh, to become a member. And uh, now we're up for accreditation and we'll be featured at the upcoming CIS conference. Uh, so we're, and what, a lot of my peers are the board chairs of the other independent schools. And, you know, this has taken us a few years to get here, but we're we should be very proud of the progress we've made. In terms of staff configuration, mm -hmm. um, you've had uh, our firm do a number of searches um, for Muir, and um, and as the needs of the organization have, have evolved, we've uh, sort of uh, been working with you and yeah. in, in meeting those needs. How do you know when a change is required? Does Muir come to you and, and uh, start uh, talking about um, an organizational shift that yeah. needs to take place? In the, the case here, the mission of the school changed. It went from being a quasi-public school to a fully independent school. It went from being a, a, to becoming more of a college prep school. We had the vision of having uh, addition to curriculum and increasing the curriculum in the high school to introducing music, art, and drama, mm -hmm. introducing community service, and in-service learning, introducing athletics. Okay. And for us to do that, we needed a, a different type of team that we had prior. The, the, the old team um, was more suited for the, the former Westmark, the pre-transformation Westmark. So this actually impacts everything. It, yeah. it impacts your admissions. Yeah. It impacts your lower middle school. It impacts your high school. It impacts uh, fundraising, yeah, and it certainly impacts student life, yeah, absolutely. As, as these transformations take place, yeah. So, as these transformations take place, the step change is is really a step change. You really have to go in there and, and figure out what the new need is, what the new attributes uh, are going to yeah. be for that that. No, Mark, you're absolutely right. I also would say that as much change as we made in the first four years, which was dramatic. We probably made as much change this year as those first four years combined. Because once you get the right team here in place, you can really accelerate the transformation of the school. So is the right team just the starting pistol for the next yeah, series of changes? Absolutely. But it, but it's it, it's empowering them to do it. Right. Right. In terms of, of that process of, of onboarding people, that in, in and of itself can be uh, enormously challenging when you have a a new management team uh, brought on within a reasonably yeah. uh, short period of time. Um, how was that uh, facilitated? And, and how did the relationships with the board end up being forged? Because uh, very often there are members of the board serving on various uh, committees who will work closely with uh, different different uh, yeah. uh, parts yeah. of that team. Yeah, we have um, four standing committees of the board and several task force, and they work with different members of the administrative team. And I think several things. One is we put in place a, a, a head support committee, which is several of us who meet with Muir regularly to discuss this. And, and uh, there's always issues that come up. We just deal with them, right? That's everything else right. we've dealt with. Um, we had a very effective retreat this year where we focus on a key issue. This year we focus on college placement. Now, the, the key thing with our 
committee structures. We have tremendous experts in education, finance, fundraising, strategy, and other areas that have been very important to the school and task force in areas like diversity and inclusiveness, and marketing and communications. And these resources have really helped the school move forward. And people, our trustees have really put their shoulder into it. And they're great resources for our senior administrative team to pair up with and to provide them some a sounding board as they look at what we need to do to keep raising the bar here. This year at our offsite, we brought in uh, resources from uh, uh, three universities to talk to the board about what do our students, what do they, what preparation do they have to be have in order to be successful in college, and and from a more aspirational point of view, we have some of the leading independent schools in California come in and talk about uh, assistive learning technologies and note taking and self-advocacy and for the board to really hear that and that really parlays into what we've done this year with uh, college prep, um, the changes in the, uh, the curriculum, the, uh, the uh, ability to write college level term papers, the uh, note-taking skills, the college, the new college counselor. Three, four years ago, th this might have been an idea. Yeah. But it was always an idea. You, but weren't, you weren't ready. Yeah, we, we changed the mission of the school. We, we brought in new leadership. We brought on a director of student life, uh, upper division director, head of college counseling, head of the English department. And together, they are really preparing our kids for college. And this year, our college placement, the early admission numbers are just staggering. You know, our, some of our better students have gotten placed, some of them got into more than five schools early each. I mean, you know, and hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of um, merit-based Scholarships. I mean, this, this is fantastic, and the school should be so proud of what we're doing here. So it, it's worked, and and it's really a great team that we've assembled here. And the board can play the supporting role in providing the resources to, to enable that. How has your approach to uh, resourcing the school evolved over the last years? Well, we have um, a mission-driven um, organization here. And there's a number of people who are interested in our mission who may or may not be within our school community. And so what we try to do is draw the largest net for potential donors. It's more like a university model than a traditional independent school where they may have multiple kids going through a, you know, six or 10 years or longer at, at a school. So you might have a family for 15 to 20 years. Ours is more like a university model where you have a four-year window and you, you, know, you have to uh, address it as such. And indeed, your head of fundraising is a yeah. university fundraiser. We, with your help, we found a terrific uh, director of advancement. And uh, she came from uh, Duke University, where she's had a major gift for Duke Medical. She understood the medical side of what, we're, um, what we address at Westmark, but she also understood the university kind of major gifts. And uh, she's been a terrific partner. Again, she partners up with the committee of the board, and uh, we've been very effective. And uh, fundraising, we fundraise uh, annual giving, we fundraise for capital campaign, we fundraise for financial aid, and uh, we have a lot of uh, large foundation gifts we've been fortunate enough to receive. We just received our largest gift ever a few weeks ago for our next phase of our uh, capital campaign, so it never ends. You're not just going to parents. Yeah. You are casting a much broader yeah. uh, engagement net. And it's not only um, funds, it's also uh, technology. Yeah. It's also um, uh, ideas, pedagogical ideas, yeah. uh, that connect to Westmark's mission. Yeah, we, we find that um, you can fund scholarships, you can fund technology, you can fund buildings, you can, um, or you can fund academic research. And, and when we meet with uh, a donor, we try and discern what's most important to them. What, what, what's, where do you get an emotional response? And it's different. And we've been very fortunate um, um, to um, be the recipient. And also, though, a major gift, our last gift, it took us about five years. And so in a university environment, you know, it can take over 12 years from a first gift to a major gift. And so we have to be patient here, too, that we've cultivated our donors. We've also been very good stewards of the money. we have delivering buildings for under $200 a square foot constructed, which is uh, very efficient. So people realize that that first meeting where we talked about cash management was very, very prescient. So people know that we're you know, we manage the money well, and we uh, we are very uh, um, yeah, economical and, and thoughtful with our construction. So we you know, we've been able to do a lot here. What is the thing 
that distinguishes the Westmark student and the Westmark approach yeah. from other students and, and, and schools. Now, with a language-based learning disability, typically there are several portions of the left hemisphere, the L-directional, that are not functioning, and therefore the right side takes over and processes the language. As a result, the right side is stronger. It's a muscle. That's a side of creativity, empathy, vision, visual. And we, we find our kids are very creative, very empathetic. What we build here is a school that builds on that, and it's very simple. Now, the right side is the creative side, and the future is about creativity and innovation. So we're building kids for the future, and what we're learning here is we build out the curriculum, the music, art, and drama to build that side. And colleges are seeing that and valuing that, and therefore our, our admission statistics are terrific. So we're, we're pleased about it, and we couldn't be more excited about the future. You're building innovators. You're building a curriculum that treasures creativity. Yeah. You're providing the hard skills required to navigate the practicalities of life. You're empowering uh, children and their families and making them feel like the sky's the limit. And as a result, you're not only um, getting accredita accreditation, but you're also attracting the attention of great colleges and universities right. uh, who are seeking to recruit your students and giving them merit-based scholarships to do so. Absolutely. That was our vision, and, you know, it just takes time and money to get there. We've got a tremendous team here at Westmark. We should be very proud of them. The board just plays a supporting role, and we just do our best to help them on that path. Not a bad track record. Jamie Montgomery, thank you so much for... Uh, sharing your experience with us, and thank you for your insights. Mark, thank you. Couldn't have done it without you. <laughs>